Hello and welcome back to the uh, video series we're doing here on Common Lisp. I do apologize for no video last week and I really appreciate everyone who, who was wishing me well and um, you know asking if I was okay. I was just feeling a wee bit burned out. Um, it happens to all of us and especially in 2020 you know um, with various restrictions on what we can and can't do. It can be an especially stressful time, so make sure you're looking after yourselves, and if you need to take a break, take a break. It's not worth burning yourself out. I say this as an engineer who has burned out occasionally before. It's not It's not worth it. Um, you know, your life's more important than that. Uh, but I'm feeling a lot better now, and I'm ready to follow up that ASDF video with um, concluding the SDF bit and how we would plug that into a testing framework. Now, I do recommend you use CL project for just booting a project up quickly. If you want a sort of classical software development environment, however, if um, if you want to build things by hand, so be it. Uh, we are going to look at the dev system stuff here. Now, you have to pick a testing framework, and I'm going to pick Rove. Uh, there was an older one called Prove, uh, but it has since been replaced by Rove. There's a couple of us, I think 5AM is another one. Uh, supposedly, Rove is the only one that's got coverage, and that coverage reporting only works in SBCL, but I've not managed to get it working. It would appear that you need to use Roswell, and I've just had no end of pain with Roswell, so um, I am going to forego uh, unit test coverage right now and I'm also not going to get into how to write unit testing because testing is such a, a big topic I think that deserves a video on its own but I do have 15 tests written in the Rove test framework and I'll get into those later but I've got this package which matches onto um, you know my testing system I've got, um, uh, the, the package depends on the, the package that I'm written, OOP, and it depends on the Rove test framework, and we just swap, uh, switch into that package and write these tests. So these tests exist, um, you've seen them in the part of this, and if we want to execute them, typically we'd call test system, but this isn't really going to do anything. Uh, it's going to compile the files in um, the project but it's not actually going to run any of the tests we just get this t here but this is is what we want to run if we want to test our system asdf test system oop you will also need to make sure that you have um rove installed so that's just a, a ql quick load away i've already got it as you can see it's just loaded it into the the cl user package now so with those two things in place, understanding how we run the test and making sure that we've got our test framework in place and our, have written tests that depend on this test framework, we can go ahead and we can uh, start writing the package system necessary to actually trigger those tests. Now I made a spelling mistake earlier because it's um, it, it auto completes Lisp code, not seemingly ASDF code. So I had a wee bit of a spelling mistake and I was driving myself mad, uh, but no matter. What we're gonna do is start with def system OOP slash tests to distinguish it from OOP. And it takes many of the same things that um, we have here. So this will be version 0.1.0 and that is not 0.1.0. There we go. Uh, we can have an author, which I'm not going to bother filling in. We've got a license, which again, I'm just going to leave it for this small example. And what we really need to be aware of is this depends on. The first thing we need to depend on is the package that we're testing. So OOP, we need to make sure that we're depending on this package. And we need to make sure we are depending on our uh, test framework of choice, in this case, Rove. So we're just defining our two dependencies in our depends on section so that it's able to boot up and run things as expected. We also need to specify the structure of the 
uh, the, the test system using this components thing and we're going to say module tests because uh, if we have a look at my directory structure here uh, I've got the name of my project here I've got the source code for my project here in SRC and I've got my tests in this tests folder as well as the the usual things like the the markdown and the org file so we need to make sure that we're including the tests module and inside that we need to say component components we're gonna say file main there we go uh, and I'll get rid of that that file loader here so just as we are above here listing all the components that make up our main system we're listing all the components that make up our test system and because uh, these are no different from any other package. You can just define a package, start writing your tests. You can split your tests up across multiple packages. You know, you can build your test system however you want. So that is just specifying how to load the test files. We're not done yet, unfortunately. Uh, there is one last th uh, couple of things we need to do. Description. You know, tests for OOP and finally we have this perform thing which we need to pass it test op op c symbol call and uh, we pass in rove run c and this is necessary for um, hooking into some of the ASDF um, inner functions because if we have a look here the SDF test op this is one of the um, functions the ASDF provides so we're just hooking into that uh, I believe and then on that we get the um, the operation of scene we, we symbol call or we, we basically we're just calling rove run with the um, system that's passed in I believe but again, that's not everything yet. Um, if we try and run this, just gonna make sure I've saved that. Yeah, everything's saved. Um, we still haven't gotten anywhere with this yet. We're still getting this, this true thing back here. Uh, after you've defined this system, you actually need to add a final line in the original system that says in order to test op we define test op to be the system OOP tests so you must make sure that you've got this line included and that you've got um, a system that is configured to set up uh, and run the tests through a testing framework that obviously depends on your main system so these systems are interlinked um, but that's fine, um, it, it does the dependency resolution for us. But with that in place now, we can do test system and we, we get all these things. We can see here that we've got 15 tests completed. There was a summary of all 15 tests passed. If we, we go to the top here, uh, you know, it's defined and, and loaded all of the system and then it's loaded the test system. It's compiled all those up its testing system OOP tests uh, it goes into the system and you know we've got these tests we get a, a wee tick we've got a, a description here you know object can get a name we're expecting string Gary to be the result of this function call and we're expecting it to be true and it is so we can see that these tests are running now if I go to my tests here and go to my first test where it says expect it to be Gary uh, and I say Bob and I run this again it compiles and runs it but we get this one of 15 tests failed at the end there you know we can see the little X at the top and it tells us what went wrong um, what we were expecting 
and we get a summary of one test failed and it gives us the name of the test that failed. So we can go in and either fix our test or fix our code depending on uh, what is necessary. You know, if your code changes, your tests need to be updated, but if your uh, the output of your code has changed deliberately, you will need to obviously update your tests. So we can see that all this is working here. And realistically, that is everything there is. And if you've set up a um, CL project base, when you get this comment here that tells you how to run uh, the test, which is how I figured out how to do it in the first place, because I was, you know, built a project, want to test it, found a test directory, and I uh, just started from here, test system, looked up what Rove was, and we have all these uh, good um, testing features available to us. So I'll leave that on screen there. And uh, I know it's a quicker video than usual this week, um, but it is just finishing off what we were looking at with ASDF and how to plug it into a test system. Uh, next time, I think uh, I have notes on Rove and we can look at how to uh, build and run tests in a good way um, because there's a good way of testing, there's a bad way of testing and it will be both Lisp, it will be mostly on testing but we'll be testing through Lisp um, so it will be less about the specifics of Lisp but, but although we will be using that uh, it will be about just as much about testing in general um, with Lisp as the vehicle um, if that makes sense so I hope that was interesting. I think it, it draws our ASDF um, adventure to a close for now. Um, thanks for, for watching. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. Please engage in the conversation. If you, you have any questions, drop me a message on Twitter. Um, take care and I will uh, see you in the next video.